Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, from your favorite niche website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited for this week's podcast. My special guest is a good buddy of mine from Seattle, Washington, and he has such an amazing program and an amazing niche that I want to share with everybody. Jerry Luker. Jerry, how are you? How are you doing, buddy? (laughs) Hey, Mark. I am doing fantastic today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So Jerry Luker is the guy for, well, I guess, you know, Lonnie Scruggs used to do this, uh, deals on wheels, but you've taken it to a whole new innovative level. It's mobilehomesmakemoney.com. And Jerry's going to just kind of tell us how he kind of got into all this. So Jerry, what's going on? Why, why mobile homes? What's, how did you even start this? Well, that's all, you know, probably everyone's, uh, uh, favorite part of their story, and and I, uh, I, I, I just about tripped and stumbled onto it. I, at age 54, I was in dire um, need of making some good money, and that's kind of a funny age to start at. But I looked around, and I decided that you know, job, it was just not going to cut it. And you know, starting at age 54, you can't make enough money in a job. Uh, to really save anything for retirement. So I had to make some chunks of money. And, you know, that's how you do that. It's pretty daunting. So I, I looked at real estate and uh, that looked like a, a good way to make money. But I, I got involved. There's so many people trying to do things in real estate. And I went to some auctions and I kind of poked around, poked, poked here and there and found that you really could not buy shopping centers with no money down. And it was it was pretty scary and and one day my wife actually found a little ad in the newspaper uh, that was offering a uh, a bank repossessed mobile home in a mobile home park uh, for sale and relatively inexpensive and uh, uh, she showed it to me and I said well that's you know I kind of dissed it at the time i said well that's you know it's a trailer in a trailer park you know? right right yeah and, and uh she persisted and said well let let's you know we should look at it and i kind of rolled my eyes and i said well let's, let's go ahead and look at it so uh made an appointment to see and it was offered by uh, an agent and went and looked at it and it was a decent park a couple hundred houses and we kind of drove around the park and it was nice and there was several houses for sale in the park, and they all seemed to be selling for you know thirty five forty thousand uh We went and looked at the home that was for sale and uh uh you know it was offered at ten thousand and the agent said the bank could take a little bit less than that he thought uh so we actually ended up offering seven thousand on the home uh a buddy of mine uh did some work on it, and we were into it about oh fifteen sixteen something like that total, and to turn around and sold it. Uh, for, you know, right around 40 and, uh, uh, the whole process only took a couple months and we said, well, yeah, we said, well, that, wow, must've been a fluke. Uh, you know, we thought it, well, that that's, you know, can't happen a second time, but I, I called the same bank that we'd gotten it from. And I said, do you have any more repos? And they said, well, uh, sure there, there's always a certain number that, you know, of loans that go bad. And I said, well, they said, would you like a list to look at in your area? And I said, sure. And they sent me a list. We went out and looked at some homes, um, being that we just done one and, and made some good money on. Uh, very simply, I looked at some more and selected another one and did another one and, and just kept doing them from there. That, that's how it all started. And the first, uh, the first full year, we did like eight, eight houses that we flipped. Right. Yep. Eight mobiles. Yeah. So, so it's basically fix and flip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, we get bank repos generally. There's a lot of other ways to to get them. Uh, people are in various circumstances. Sometimes, uh, you know, because of a job loss or a divorce or you know, you 
you know, you name it, people will just sometimes just, you know, leave them or whatever, but there's, there's various ways to get good deals on them. And, uh, you, you take a peek and say, well, that, gee, that'll pretty up real quick, uh, and sell at retail. And you look at the numbers real, uh, real simple to do that. And, uh, you know, we, you know, just keep doing it. So that's, you know, it's, it's, it's simple. There's a lot of little tricks to the trade, of course, that we've developed over the years that, you know, things to know to maximize the profits and alleviate all the hassle or stress with it. But, uh, you know, it's, it's been a phenomenal business and that was, boy, that goes back over a decade now. Wow. So let, let me ask you, what, what, what's your background in? Have you always been an entrepreneur? Uh, well, I've done just about everything. I, uh, I, I tried, <clears throat> tried commission sales. Uh, I've washed dishes. Uh, I've, I've worked in a factory. Uh, I've installed burglar alarms. Uh, I had uh, quite a um, uneventful uh, career up to my, you know, age fifty-four in, into my mid-fifties, and uh, I. I say that to encourage a lot of people who might be in the same circumstance, but, you know, I, I really hadn't uh, made a, a huge success out of my life up until that point, but things can change when you find the right, right medium. That's yeah. Unreal. So in the past decade, then how many fix and flips, or I should say fix and flips, but how many mobiles have you bought and sold? Would you say? Uh, I lost track, uh, pushing 200 somewhere. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, it's pretty quick because uh, they're not real estate. Uh, they're personal property. And so they're bought and sold just like you'd buy or sell a car or a truck or a motorcycle or a snowmobile or anything else. And that, that's one of the things that people don't realize they are, they, they are homes, there are houses, uh, but they are not real estate. So they're, they're bought and sold with a simple bill of sale and a title. So you have a real quick in and out. So there's no title company. There's no frictional costs like you would, it would with a house. There, there's not, and there's not five pages of, you know, is there any, uh, easements or boundary disputes or da 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 da, you know, none of that. They're, they're personal property and, and seriously, they're a little larger than a car, but they're bought and sold just like a car or truck. And so you, you just do a simple number. You look at a house and say, well, gee, uh, what's the market? What, what's similar homes selling for in the market right now? Uh, okay, you know that figure. Then, you know, what can I buy this for? And, and pretty it up a little bit. And is there any, any profit to be made? And it's very accurate. There's only three or four numbers you have to, you have to look at. That's crazy. I mean, you know, playing devil's advocate, I, you know, when I hear mobile home park, I immediately think ugly, distressed, dangerous, uh, poverty. I mean, is am I off on that? What 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 is it? What is are there a range of mobile home parks? I mean, do you do you look at higher end parks? Do you, does it matter? Like what? Well, it uh, that's kind of a, a yes or no question, and I'll answer it this way. Uh, parks are just like neighborhoods. There's some regular neighborhoods that are they're really run down and trashy, whatnot. There are some neighborhoods that are, you know, million-dollar estates. Parks are the same thing. There are some parks that are uh, really run down and, and, and kind of low end and trashy and whatnot. And that is one of the, uh, the thing that I have found in the business. And the most exceptional thing is there's really not a lot of competition because a lot of people had the same attitude I did, you know, about, well, you know, a trailer in a trailer park. Well, there's a lot of myths and misconceptions, but when you get around those, you start realizing that, uh, there's a lot of good parks. There are parks that have, uh, beautiful homes and the, and the way that the, the homes are made now and have been actually, they keep getting better all the time, but homes now you walk in, they got, you know, real sheetrock. They got two by four or maybe even two by six construction, uh, beautiful vinyl windows, rigor comp roofs. They have the, the new, uh, cement board, hardy board, you know, exterior. I mean, they're built just like a regular stick built house, but they're, they're built in a factory. Uh, it worked for Henry Ford, right. you know, and, and assembly line, but the materials, the way they're built, you say, take some of these beautiful new homes that they're, they're making now that, you know, are pushing a couple thousand square feet. Uh, you put them in a nice park that's well managed, and 
it's it's a beautiful uh, community. And in fact, one of the things I like about parks, most of them have some occupancy requirements and they can say, hey, you feel this, you know, you have to apply to live here. Uh, we don't want felons. So, you know, you don't have drug dealers and child molesters and, you know, they, they have they have some rules and regs, which which really work out for the best most of the time and making a really, really nice neighborhood in a really nice park. Now, that's not to say that you have to deal with those type of homes, because let's face it, some of the parks that might be kind of a medium range park or maybe even even a little less than that. Hey, do people live there? Yeah. Do they own homes there? Yeah. Do homes buy and sell in some of the lower end parks? Yeah. I mean, you know, the people aren't living there free. They're they're They bought and they, they sell their homes. So uh, you can actually do this business in in any type of park you want. I mean, I don't go to the rural low end ones. Sure. But, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, that is a great question. That's so a great question. Do you have to finance on these or they just pay cash? Do they get a bank loan? How do you get paid? <laughs> this is really funny. That's one of the other myths uh, about uh, mobile homes and mobile home parks. And uh, one of the myths floating around is, well, gee, you know, people just can't get financing on mobile homes in, in a mobile home park, which means that, A, uh, mobile homes now being over 10% of the total housing market, that either all the people that live in them, they all paid cash for their houses not likely, right? Or or B, they're not really bought and sold. People just live in them, and when they get tired of living in them, they just pack up and move away. And the first family that happens upon the vacant house moves in. You know, they're, <laughs> right. they're, they don't. <laughs> there's nothing bought and sold, uh, and that's one of the myths that has made me a lot of money in the business because when you know, once again, ninety nine percent of people have you know the misconceptions, but the fact is that. They're easily financed. I mean, when I buy a house, uh, I pretty it up a little bit, uh, you know, a nice family or a couple or whatever, they, they want to move in there. It's easy to finance. Not every bank does it, but, you know, a lot of banks do, and they do it reasonable, you know, uh, requirements. They're no more stringent than, you know, getting a loan for a car or anything else, because let's face it, a lot of these homes are you know twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar homes? They're not a four hundred thousand dollar house, so it's not really hard, you know, for a bank to be loaning a people that you know they have a job, they have right. decent credit, they don't have to be perfect, but you know they. And why would not? Why would not? And this is what I say: Why wouldn't a bank, you know, loan money? Uh, I mean, one banker had told me at one time the things you hear in this are so funny. He says, "Well, he says I I know the problem why banks you know don't finance them." And I, I, I said, oh, why is that? He says, well, they're they're mobile. They're mobile, right? They're mobile. Maybe, maybe somebody will yeah, abscond with it in the middle of the night. And I said, well, if banks don't like loaning things on mobile, why the hell would they loan money in a car? Right. I mean, come on. I mean, right, but, right. But the stuff, you, that's 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 people for you. But no, they're easily financed. So, uh, you know, you pretty up a house and somebody's interested in it. And of course I work with, I've got my financing sources and they, they get loans for people to buy these homes all the time. And they're very easily financed really. Is it hard to find a deal? I mean, what's, what deal flow like for you? Uh, you know, as far as, uh, as far uh, as, you know, getting a good list and, and finding something. I mean, I, I assume you only go in Seattle, correct? Or do you yeah. go all over the country? No, no, there's uh, there's enough, and Seattle is not really a mobile home mecca or anything, but there are enough uh, uh, parks and everything here within, uh, you know, uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes from, you know, where we're at. I mean, no no worse than the commute anywhere. There are enough parks and, and mobiles around here to, to keep me busy, you know, more than, more than I could ever do by myself. But what I've done is that there are... Let's face it, every home out there or most of the homes in every park out there, and there's hundreds of thousands of them, they got loans on them. Most of them. Some people pay cash, but the vast majority, there's loans. Well, all those, there's going to be a certain amount of people that default on their loans, just like there is in, in any you know, in any genre. So there, every month, there are, are homes that come up as repossessed uh, by a bank. 
And I have just learned, and of course, we share this with with the people that work with us, uh, you know, how to, you know, find out all the banks, all the credit unions, all the mortgage companies, everybody that has repo lists, you know, you just get their lists. And some of them are emailed to me. Some I go on their websites to find them or whatever. I compile a list of all the repo homes available. And my, it's fun. It's really, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to find. My wife and I take off with a pack of big lunch and we go around and we look at all these homes and uh, we've arranged with the banks and everything. We've got keys or codes to, to get into the key boxes of all the houses. We go out and look at them and we, you know, the ones that, that looked to us like, you know, because we know the numbers, uh, what it would sell for, prettied up a little bit. And what the bank is asking for it, the ones that are the the highest profit potentials, uh, we'll go ahead and throw bids on them. So it's it, there's plenty of inventory out there, and we go ahead and look at them and uh, make bids on the ones we like, and we uh, make you know uh, I, I call it I guess a lowball offer, but a lot of folks don't realize how reasonable you can buy a mobile home. And this is something that, that really shocked us. Uh, completely unlike real estate, mobile homes, to our advantage, they do depreciate. It's not like a house on land that, that you know, except for some some downturns once in a while, but it, it usually holds value or, or appreciates. Well, mobile homes depreciate. And that's a that's a, a plus for us because a home that somebody bought, you know, 10, 12, 15 years ago, they've been paying it on all that time. The bank's got plenty of money out of it. The value of it isn't huge anymore. And when there's a default, the bank might be in Tennessee or the mortgage company, the, the asset here in Seattle. Uh, the bank doesn't have people that in every state and city and, and whatever they can go and deal with the home, you know, clean it and fix it and try to resell it and, you know, all that. No. When, a, when it goes default, what the bank really would like to do in most of these, they just want to get rid of it. It's a liability. I mean, they're, the bank is going to be responsible for the park rent, the insurance, and, you know, the maintenance and utilities, plus Here's a house set vacant, and it's subject to deterioration and vandalism. So the bank, when a when a mobile home's default, they've already figured in to begin with. Uh, when they're doing their their actuary stuff, they're all their accounting. They know a certain amount will go into default. It's it's already you know figured in. So when one does, they don't they don't worry about it or fuss with it too much. That's why I come along sometimes with you know three, four, five thousand dollars. And I can buy a really, really decent house for for just a little bit of money. The bank says, oh, give me a little bit of cash. We just want to get rid of the liability. So uh, most people have no idea, because it is personal property, it's not real estate, how the values, depreciations, and all this, how it all works to our benefit, to the people who want to buy them. Uh, you know, I bought a lot of homes for 5000 bucks and less, and we're talking three-bedroom, two-bath, all appliances, everything, you know. People just don't realize that this this exists. I didn't until I got into business. It's phenomenal. I never knew it to realize. I love the simplicity of it. The simplicity of it is wow. It's 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 crazy. It's crazy. I love the fact that it's not real estate. That's a plus. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and you can get financing. And it's just a buyer and a seller. And it's such a big market. Ten percent. It's yep. a huge market. Yep. So, and there's, there's no competition. There's really not. There's really no competition because people have, you know, it, it is just, it is just growing up with a lot of uh, misconceptions and myths, and you know, just attitudes about about uh, mobile homes, <laughs> trailers, whatever you want to call them. Right, wobbly, right. An old fellow the other day said, "Oh yeah, a wobbly box." Well, that's what he called them. And true, the first ones that were made in the in the sixties and in the early seventies, whatever, yeah, they were junk. They a lot of them really were, to tell you the truth. But in nineteen seventy six, uh the HUD came along, you know, and they put standards on them and since then, uh, you know, as far as safety and construction and whatnot, like I say, the last uh yeah, I even go back twenty, twenty five years, they've been making, you know, really Nice homes. They're good value. And and I think, and this is just a little bit of philosophy here, but the way I see the whole country going, let's face it, you know, with a $20 trillion debt, hey, 
all Americans have been living on borrowed borrowed time. I mean, it's it's like they preach to us not to run up our credit cards, <laughs> and the country's twenty trillion dollars in debt. People are not the the uh, the ideal for uh, the American dream anymore. Is not a four or five six hundred thousand dollar house. It's just not affordable housing. You know, will continue to be in the forefront of what's happening in the market, and that is manufactured homes. I mean, let's just face it. I mean, it really is. I mean, the rich get richer. The middle class is is not as rich as they used to be overall. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with mobile homes. I mean, I'm not trying to sell them or the idea to anybody, but just a, a fact of the matter that a lot of people are, are, are coming and they look and they say, well, what would I uh, get an apartment for or what, you know, what are my options? And a lot of times you can go ahead and buy a mobile home uh, you can, you know, you you buy the home, but you're renting the space it sets on from the park. But you know what? Both of those two things combined, the rent for the park and the and the payment on the house, is less than is less than a, a two bedroom apartment. No kidding. And you can own the home. You got your own four walls, your own yard, your own parking space. You don't, you know, you're not connected like you are in a condo or an apartment. Yeah, it is just the the figures are just are phenomenal and you know one of the stigmas is, is slowly is slowly disappearing. People are saying, "Hey, you know, I have my own house in a in a in a decent surrounding." Right. Uh that that's all that matters. What what's so, more important to you? Would you say the park itself and the management of the park or the mobile that you're picking up at the right price, you know how much it's going to cost to fix up and sell at the comp? Uh, location, location, location. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Location, location, uh, I, location. I, I, I give you a, a real quick example, uh, and this is uh, last year. Uh, there was a uh, a beautiful, uh, big mobile home, and it was 2008, uh, relatively new, uh, just immaculate condition. This was in a mobile home park. And they had raised the rent in the park through the roof. Uh, the management really didn't seem to care about the people in the park anymore. And the people were pulling out their homes and putting them elsewhere or, you know, leaving in droves. We managed to to buy a home in that park and we moved it to a park uh, about 35 miles up the road where the the, the rent the space rent was reasonable. The management was first class. They really cared about the people. They really had developed a beautiful community there. And there was a high demand for people getting into that park. And we were able to, you know, actually move it from one place to the other place. We don't always do them. Sometimes you just fix them in place. But we made we made close to $35,000 profit by moving uh, the park, the house from park A to park B. Exact, you know, it was the exact house. The, the exact the, house, but just a better park. Sold for that that much much difference. So the park and the management is uh, is 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 really is is really crucial. Uh, you know, as far as the the valuation of the property. Of course, once again, even if you get in a park that is not pristine and and uh, not. Uh, um, you know, not really poorly managed, but they're they're kind of middle of the road. It still is a numbers game, and right. if you can buy it and pretty it up, and you know what the selling prices are in that park. I mean, they are what they are. Uh, if you can buy it and pretty it up a little bit, and uh, there's profit to 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 sell it at the prevailing market value. Like I say, there's only four numbers involved in any deal. If it works, it works. And one of the things that we do that's different than some of the other folks in in this business where they buy little old cheap houses and they try to get their initial investment back by reselling it to somebody and carrying back the contract uh for cash flow uh we have gone to the 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 bigger newer nicer homes and pretty then them up and then we just go ahead and resell them and we take the cash and we're on to the next deal so we take the and in fact We've averaged uh, the whole history over twenty thousand dollars per deal. The last three years, we've averaged over twenty five thousand dollars profit on each deal we've done. We just go ahead and take that profit, and we're out of there. We don't have to, you know, give a second thought about 
you know, it, it, it's what's done is done. We just take the cash and then we've got other things to do with the money we're making to, to reinvest, uh, you know, to, in, in places that, that pay us back. So we don't, um, keep the houses and, you know, worry about if the people are paying the monthly or, or not, whatever. We just, you know, take the, the nicer homes that we can make a nice profit on and, and flip it and take the cash and then and go invest that where we want to. Headache free. What if I don't Headache have a lot free. of money, Jerry, to get started? I mean, what if I don't have $5,000 well, to get started? Is that a problem? Uh, no, for two reasons it's not. Um, one of the, the, the people that it just, uh, I, I've got to know he's, he's in this area. Uh, in fact, he's a senior management at one of the big box stores in our home office. But he uh, he decided to go ahead and, and join us, and uh, he got our information. He looked it over for a week, one week, you know, and he got it with a buddy of his. They put in $3,000 a piece, bought a house uh as a repo, they didn't do anything to it. They Mary made cleaned it or something, but they uh, put it on Craigslist. They sold it two weeks later for twenty two thousand dollars. They made sixteen thousand bucks <laughs> on a six thousand dollar investment in roughly three weeks, and uh, uh, they put in three thousand a piece. So, and I have purchased a lot of homes myself for five thousand dollars or less. And uh, so, you don't need a lot of money now if you don't have any money at all. Period. Let's say you you know you're zero flat broke. Right. There are investors. There are people out there that love this business model, and uh, we have in every community there are people with money. Every, and and we know this, right? People, you know, takes money to make money. Everyone knows the people around with money. Well, I guarantee you, they don't make their money by letting their money sit in the bank, and paying what now one and a half two percent. No, I mean one and a half two percent is really. Uh, ambitious. I, yeah. I don't know anyone getting that in the bank. Uh, no. And, and so these investors are looking for uh, opportunities. And I don't even have to, and people don't even have to sell. There are people in every community that we all know of. And when I tell people who they are, they go, oh, gee, why did I didn't think of that? There's people in every community that they make their money by putting investors together with with uh, uh, or or you know project people like me putting us together with investors, they do the selling. I just I I sat down and explained it to them. Hey, here's what we do, how we do it, why we do it. Here's the figures, uh, and they go, gee, you mean somebody uh, could put in uh, you know ten thousand dollars or or twenty thousand dollars on a deal, and you know make five thousand bucks profit on that in ninety day period of time, and uh, yeah. Yeah. I and go well, why, you know, well, why wouldn't I? I mean, it's a it's a short period of time, uh, it's a spectacular return. I mean, that's that's just you know that's just unheard of. Uh, very low risk because the numbers are so firm, and uh, the in the 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 investor has full control. In other words, he just doesn't have to hand somebody a blank check. He can actually the the people with the money, uh, they can actually buy the home directly from the bank if they want. They don't even have to you know, have anybody handle the money, uh, they can be on the title, just like a car title. You know, you have your legal owner and registered owner. Uh, legal owner is usually the bank and registered owner is the guy driving a car. Well, you know, I've done investments where I'm with the registered owner. The guy with the money is the legal owner. Yeah, you, they're both on title. Um, the, he's protected, you know, 100%. It's not that much money invested. So there are people out there that will jump all over you know, this type of opportunity. And, and the thing that, that I stress and then people, and sometimes I say, yeah, it's, it's, we've had people doing this and, and we're getting better. We accumulate the information and, and how does, uh, how do other people, how have they gotten a hold of money? We share this, but the thing that you have to realize is that if you can make, you know, 10, 15, $20,000 on a deal, how many deals do you have to do or how many projects do you have to do before you have your own money? Right. You, you don't, have, you, don't yeah. you don't have to look for investors, you know, after that, unless you want to do as, as some people have, they say, well, gee, you know, if all I'm doing is managing the product project, I'm, I'm buying the house. I've got my handyman that, that fixes and paints it and a realtor that I list it with. I can, I can manage several projects at a time. So they may want to work with investors, um, you know, to, uh, you know, to have a lot of money to work with, but that's up to the individual. But, you know, it's, it's, it's not that big a deal. You don't need a lot of money, uh, or like I say, to get started, or you can start with, with zero as long as you're, you know, a little bit creative.
So that's one thing I liked about it. Uh, when I looked at real estate, like I say, I found it really was not possible to be buying properties, um, you know, with, with, with zero money in the real estate arena, but with, no, multiple, very, very tough. yeah, you, you just, you really don't, you don't need much money at all. And I was surprised at how little I had to invest in, in some homes. Well, Jerry, I'm really excited about this niche and I could talk all day with you about it. Unfortunately, we're at that point in the podcast. Now I'm going to put you on the spot and I'm going to ask you for your tip of the week. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. Uh, uh, the tip of the week would be for, you know, people interested in, in more information, you know, about, you know, what we do and, and everything. Uh, there's a website and it's uh, www.forums.mobilehomesmakemoney.com. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to yeah. link to it in the show yeah. notes so everybody can go there. So it's www forums.mobilehomesmakemoney.com. Yeah, and that's forums, that's plural, that's F-O-R-U-M-S, forums.mobilehomesmakemoney.com. And that's our forum where we have, uh, you know, people chiming in and we discuss, uh, you know, various mobile home, you know, projects and, and kind of what's going on in the in the industry and the business. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Great. And my tip of the week is going to be learn more about Jerry and how mobile homes make unbelievable money on his webinar. So I'm going to link to his webinar so you can learn more about it because this is really quite a fantastic niche. We, it's not real estate and there's no competition or very little competition. And Jerry, can you do this part time, full time? I mean, how much time does it take? Well, it takes uh, very little time. You can start part time. And uh, um, one of our first projects, uh, we went out, spent one day looking at homes, uh, threw in some offers to the bank, and uh, we we bought a house. And we spent my wife and I spent two weekends. This is when we first started. We spent two weekends. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, we went and cleaned and prettied up and painted a little bit ourselves. Of course, you can hire it done if you want, but the first one. Uh, so we spent about four days, put it on the market, and forgot about it. Went home, and a couple weeks later, got an offer and accepted it and put the money in the bank. So um, uh, <laughs> you can start. You can start very, very, very part time, and if you don't want to do any work at all. Just get the merry maids to come in and clean, and uh, we give people a lot of tips on how to find a reasonable handyman if there's a little bit of fixing or painting that needs to be done. Uh, they don't have to spend any time at all. And uh, uh, there, are, with me, it was I, I started part time. I was full time in 60 days. That is just because you know when you make over 20,000 um, bucks, which is uh, about <clears throat> on one project, which was uh, about half of what I've made the entire year previous to that uh wh when you do that uh why would i do anything else so i, <laughs> I, right. went, I went full time pretty quickly but I, yeah, uh, I don't, yeah i, I don't blame you time. well i'm definitely uh sold and i'm gonna try to flip my own mobile out here just for fun and uh i'm i'm really looking forward to doing it now you know you'll come back on the podcast we'll talk about it i'll talk about my uh you know how how it went for me so jerry how do you feel about the podcast? You know what? I, I, I love the podcast idea. I think it's great. I think it's a great way to share it with people, and, and that's what we're here to. And I, you know, I, we're in business to make a buck, but, you know, the really, really fun thing is being able to share with people and have them go out and in their lives now the same type of success that that I have and, and other people have um it it you know you get up every morning with a big smile on your face going you know what i think i did something worthwhile and i love the podcast idea yeah no i love it and uh i read a quote somewhere that said the myth is that successful people are generous and because of that they're happy and really what it should be is Generous people are happy, and happy people are successful. I love that idea. So I love that you're sharing your program with everybody, and you're being generous with it. And I can tell you're not only just successful, but you're really happy. 
and uh, that's that's really commendable. So, Jerry, I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys want to learn more, go to again uh, the link below. Get on the webinar, and of course, Jerry's tip forums.mobilehomesmakemoney.com. And look, give me some love. Go to www.thelandgeek.com. Download the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And of course, get this always informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. And if you want to buy some wholesale land, go to FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. This is Mark Podolsky with Jerry Luker. Jerry, thanks again. I hope you're going to come back. Oh, I'd love to anytime, Mark. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, I'll, I'll see everybody next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.